Hello everyone, it's Janos. Today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build an LTSP server and its clients. Um, I'm using Ubuntu 10.0.4 um, alternative installation for this. Um, you can easily download that from the Ubuntu website. Right now I'm uh, creating the virtual PC for the server, adding two network cards, uh, one extra network card actually, um, which will be host only and the default Ethernet Zero network card is going to be bridged to the network simply because it's um, um, through the installation we will need access to the internet. I've, I've chosen to use Ethernet Zero for the, uh, for the bridged one right now but that's going to have to be swapped around when the server is done but we're going to do that later. So let's power up the PC and kick off the installation. The first thing you have to do here is uh, after selecting the language is press F4 and select install an LTSP server. You press enter on that and uh, press enter on install Ubuntu. That will kick, kick off the specific build for the, for the LTSP server configuration. Here I'm going through the basic configuration settings. And a couple of things about the, uh, the actual LTSP server. If you have really old hardware lying around and you want to actually make them work again, um, you can use this server. If you, if, you got, if you got like a fairly powerful PC with a couple of gigabytes of RAM, um, and uh, like a 10, 20, 40, 60, whatever gig hard drive, you can install the server on that one and um, use your clients um, through booting up through PXE. Um, in the clients, you don't even need to have hard drives because um, everything's going to be used from the server. Hostname is, it can be anything. I've chosen LTSP server. Time zone is fine. So it's pretty useful if you have um, if you have an environment where you have where you have very old pieces you can't actually use anymore. Write the changes to disks. and the partition is created. <coughs> now I'm not doing this real time so I'm just doing the voiceover of the installation because I didn't want you to wait until all the installation finishes and um, I've just given the root username here which was Janostech and uh, chosen a, an administrator password don't want my home directory to be encrypted and here where we actually need we don't need HTTP proxy but we need internet access here because it's actually downloading a couple of files and updates from online the basic server configuration is 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 really easy to do now, out of the box, unfortunately, um, it doesn't work properly when it builds the thin client system. So we will have to do a manual uh, refresh on the on the client um, image. Here, that that's that's what it does at the moment. It's building the thin client system, but um, it won't work. Now, if you if you try try. Um, when, when the, the installation is finished, if you try to boot up a thin client from this, it won't work simply because there is a bug somewhere, I guess. So um, we'll have to actually fire up a command from the terminal to rebuild this um, system. And after that, it works actually perfectly fine. 
we have to install the bootloader into the master boot record. And fairly soon it's going to finish the installation. Right, the installation has been completed. Let's boot into the newly set up PC. <coughs> The next step um, I will have to do here um, is to swap the network cards around, swap the network settings on the network cards around because um, I'm going to use um, the Ethernet Zero network card as a uh, host only. and the Ethernet 1 network card is bridged to the network. So let's just select that as host only and swap these two settings around. By doing this um, is the main network card is going to connect to the um, virtual switch which will actually um, sort out the thin clients it will take care of the thin clients and um, Ethernet 1 is going to be for the internet connection and that's going to be able to th the client's going to be able to use the same internet connection as the as the server server is on so log in with our username and uh, previously given password. There we go. Um, the network card needs to be configured to static IP address and the DHCP as well has to be configured. Uh, I'm going to show you now how to do that. So go into Nautilus as an administrator. And if you go into file system, etc, and network, <coughs> and uh, double click on interfaces, you're going to see the setup for the network cards. Now, um, by default, it's going to look like uh, iFace, Ethernet 0, iNet, and it's going to be the HCP. Now it needs to be static because this is a server. I've select, I've chosen 10.10.10.10 uh, as an IP address because 192.168 is my wireless uh, network's uh, IP, so I don't want to actually use the same for the um, server. And here we have to actually configure the DHCP uh, setup as well. And this is for the thin client, so it's etc, ltsp, and dhcpd.conf. Um, you just have to set it up onto the same subnet as the um, as your server is. So it's 10.10.10.0 .10 .10 and the range which will which will be um, Given the IP address is what will be given out to the um, thing client is from 10.20 till 10.250, so you've got like 230 IP addresses there. I'm just deleting this option; you don't actually need that. If you set it up the same way, same way I do do it here, it will work. 
um, and obviously later on you can actually change these settings. So let's just close the terminal. Uh, I could actually reset the um, network and the DHCP here from the terminal, but I decided to actually just reboot the PC. Um, and when it comes back, what we're going to do, we're going to um, rebuild the thin client image. And uh, that should take care of the whole installation. Um, The command to do that is sudo space ltsp dash update dash image space dash dash arch space i386. And this will actually rebuild the image. It takes about, I think it takes about 10 minutes. Obviously, I've actually cut that part out, so it's going to be nearly immediate here. And as soon as the image is done, we can actually create a client. It's, it's very easy to do. Just create a virtual machine. It doesn't even need to have a hard drive. It can be anything. All we need to have is um, network bootable capability. So it just have to be able to uh, boot up from the network. As you can see, I gave uh, a one gigabyte hard drive to it, but it won't use that. So turning off the CD drive and uh, just make sure that your network adapter is on host only because that's the virtual switch where your server is connected to. So it's booting up from the network. And there we go. The PX is working and we have a functioning server. In the next tutorial, I'm going to go through um, in depth how to install um, um, the Think Line management Manager and um, how to set up a couple of things on the client, how to apply uh, the same virtual environment onto all uh, Citrix clients, uh, how to actually do the image to be the same. If anyone logs in, here we don't actually have any users installed just yet, so we won't be able to actually log into the to the virtual PC. You could you could, you can actually do that with a with an administrator account, but uh, in the next part, I'm going to we we are going to create users, and um, we're going to control them through the server as well. So it actually boots up. It's communicating with the server. This is actually in real time. I, I've left it running. There we go. The client is running from the server. It's all working okay. Um, see you in the in the.